Hey, welcome to another episode of Camp and Camera. Today we've got a really cool product to show you. I mean it, it's really cool. Hey, welcome back everyone. If this is your first time here, welcome to the channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. You know if you've been here before that occasionally I like to check out a, a product that would be good for camping or potentially good for camping. And this is one of those products. This is a portable compressor um, air conditioner from the folks over at Zero Breeze. They reached out to me and asked if this was something that I'd like to try. And initially, um, I didn't think I would because I already had an air conditioner for my teardrop. But on my last camping trip, that air conditioner uh, threw up an error code and hasn't been working since. So I thought, well, maybe I should try it. Now listen, as always, I'm going to give a 100% open and honest review. Um, they did send this over for a test, but I'm going to tell you what I like about it and what I don't like. And I'll be completely straight with you as always. So, this is a portable air conditioner. And when I say portable, I mean you can plug it into the grid. It comes with this power adapter where you can do that. But if you notice, it's sitting on a large battery bank. And you can run this thing for, as I understand, a couple hours off battery power. I'm not big on unboxing videos. I don't want to see what a box looks like, so I've already taken everything out of the box. So let, what exactly does this unit come with? Well, let's just start over here first. I've got this drain hose. Um, this is a compressor uh, air conditioner, so at some point you're going to have to drain some water out of it. It comes with a drain hose for that. The battery <clears throat> is boxed separately from the air conditioner. And you're gonna see this piece of foam in the box. Now this piece of foam has a couple circles die cut in there. And the reason for that is this is something that you can put into a window and use as an adapter for the two exhaust hoses. Now, the exhaust hoses are these two tubes over here. They're flexible. They'll extend, you can bend them in different shapes. And it comes with an adapter that you put the exhaust hoses on the unit with. Over here, it comes with a hose that actually blows the cool air out, and it comes with an adapter for it, and you'll see it comes with a remote control. Now, it does come with an AC adapter, and you can either power the unit with this or charge the battery. And I was delighted to see that it actually came with two good user manuals, one for the unit and one for the battery. They're both written in clear English. They make sense. They uh, have good illustrations. I'll show you this in a bit. So for once, a product that comes with good instructions. And as I mentioned, this actually comes with some really good instructions that actually make sense and they're written in plain English. And here's some very nice instructions for the control panel and remote control as far as where the buttons do. And like I said, there's a piece of foam that comes in the box with the battery. It looks like that. And here's how you would use it with the two exhaust pipes in a window. Here's a section on the battery and it tells you how to look at the charging state to see exactly how charged up the battery is. And there's some installation guidelines. And here is a troubleshooting or malfunction diagnosis guide. So it's cool that that's all in there. Right now we have this thing hooked into the battery. There's a cord that goes between the unit and the battery. We've got that plugged in. So I'm gonna move a couple things out of the way. We're gonna turn the unit on you do that by pushing the button on the battery and holding it. Okay. You'll hear a beep. There's some lights that come on. And you'll see a little uh, temperature flash up on the screen just for a moment. So the first thing I noticed is that when it came on, it looks like it's reading in Celsius. And I'm not a Celsius guy, so I'm going to have to consult the manual and turn this dude over to Fahrenheit. So it says if you push the the light button for three seconds it'll go from celsius to fahrenheit let's just try it yes and it shows it's blowing out 66 degree air so when the unit first turns on the fan is running pretty slow and then it will ramp up and you you can hear that um, there's a light on the back of the unit right here that's blue when it's cooling but there's also a button here that you can push. It looks like a fan that will turn it into just fan mode. And when that's running, this light on the back will be red. So if this unit is in a tiny camper, you certainly don't want to blow the hot air back into the camper. So what you're going to do is you're going to put this adapter on the back of the unit. 
there's some little notches that it goes in at the bottom. It snaps in place. And then you'll take the two exhaust vents and you'll put these inside the, uh, inside the ducts here. So as I understand, you pull out the, the front three or four inches of this thing, you stick it in the duct and it's supposed to screw in place. Yep. So there's a couple ways you can use the unit. You can either put the whole thing inside of a small camper, put this adapter in the window, and run your two exhaust pipes out of that. That way you're not blowing hot air back into the, to the camper. Or let's say you're in a small camper or a tent and you don't want the unit inside with you, you can use this flex hose to blow the unit through a small opening into the space. Um, and then just leave the whole unit setting outside. And to do that, you have to use this adapter. And this is probably one thing that I'm not real crazy about, is this adapter does not snap in place. There's a couple screws that you have to put in here to use this adapter. Um, it would have been really nice if this would have snapped in place, just like the one on the back. That way you wouldn't have to carry any tools with you. There's a couple small rubber plugs on this thing that have to be removed for you to be able to put the screws in. Looks like I accidentally hit the on button. Okay, so let's put the adapter on now. Uses a couple Allen head screws to, to go on. It looks like the Allen wrench they gave me doesn't fit very well. I guess it'll work. And like on the back side, I assume that you just pull out the first couple inches of this thing and it screws in place. Let's see. So with the duct now on the front, you can have the whole unit setting outside your camper or outside of a tent, and you can merely just blow the cool air in through a small opening, and you can pull this out, you can adjust it any direction. Um, and they also recommend that the exhaust pipes at the back be angled away from each other. Let me show you that. Since each of these pipes have a different purpose, they don't want to interfere with each other, they recommend that you angle them away from one another easy enough all right so the first test is what i call the happy wife test joanne does not like to be hot she does not like bugs so she'll be sitting in this clamshell tent on some of our camping trips and let's just see if this dude will blow on somebody and cool them off so oddly enough even though this tent is screened all the way around the netting on it or the webbing on it is so tight and closed that you can barely feel any breeze coming through so really and truly, it's pretty warm in here. Um, I'm sweating. I don't know exactly how hot it is, but it's pretty hot. So let's turn this air conditioner on and see what it does. Turn the power on. I'll see it's on rocket mode. So let it, let's let it do its thing. Now listen, y'all, I'm being serious. It is pretty dang hot out here. <laughs> I'm wiping the sweat off. So this will be a good test for it. Right now, the unit says it's blowing out 66 degree air. Um, and I've got it blowing right pretty much at my chest. And I will have to say it feels pretty good. So as a personal cooler, yeah, it does blow out some pretty cool air in a very specific area. I don't think by any means I'm going to cool down this whole tent. And like I say, this tent is an open tent all the way around. And that's not the purpose. This is just to cool me down where I sit. And uh, yeah, it's blowing out some cool, pleasant air. That'll be nice. Okay, for the next test, we wanna see if it'll cool down this tiny camper. Now there's a couple ways I could go about this. I can either put the unit inside the camper and hook up the two exhaust pipes on these two sewer fittings that I already have installed on the camper for my other air conditioner system. Um, but if I have it inside, I'm gonna have to run a drain hose out. And I don't really have a hole in my camper to run a separate drain hose out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna it, uh, leave it sitting on a table outside the camper, um, let the exhaust pipes be outside, and then the cooling pipe, I'm gonna hook it up to one of these fittings and we'll just blow the cold air in. Let's see how that does. Since I'm not gonna be using both of them, I'm gonna put the top one back on, tighten it up. Let me take the flex hose around, put it on this one.
There we go. It actually fits a lot better than I expected. Great. So I see blue lights, the battery's turned on. Let's turn the power on. And I see the rocket mode light is illuminated. I can hear it starting up. Let's walk around the unit, see if it's blowing out warm air. Yep, I feel warm air coming out. So as you can see, it's 81 degrees and 56% humidity. And I have the cool air blowing in right there. So let's close the camper up and see how it does. And no, I don't have bed sheets on right now. I'm not actually camping. Now, one thing I want to show you is that I have the vent on top just slightly open. I always have the vent open at least a little bit, no matter what, even in the dead of winter, because um, I want to make sure that I've actually got airflow through the camper. I don't want to suffocate in this little box. All right, I have a stopwatch running. Let's give it, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes, come back and see what it looks like. So we're back in the workshop. I'm not going to give it, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes. And I want to go in and see how much the temperature dropped and see what it's doing. Um, but while we're waiting, uh, two things. One is I have it running off battery power. I don't have it plugged into any power source right now. So uh, we're doing two tests. One, to see how cool it'll do. And two, do you know how well does the battery work? Um, now, the other thing, <clears throat> uh, if any of you follow the channel, you know that once a year I do this event called Camping on a Porch at the Edgar Evans State Park in Middle Tennessee. We're doing that again this year. If you're on the DIY Teardrop Campers Community Facebook page, you'll know all the details. And I may be giving this unit away at that event as a door prize. So that'd be pretty cool. Uh-oh, you heard the noise of me getting the bones out, didn't you? There you go. There you go. So let me show you what I've done here. I have the uh, pipe that came with the air conditioner. I have it right on this, what I call a bayonet fitting. And a bayonet fitting is basically a sewer connection for a large camper. I bought this square uh, bayonet fitting back plate, put it on there with butyl tape, and then this cap just quarter turn screws on there. Um, these little bumps or knobs you see coming out, um, it just goes onto those. And it just so happens that this pipe that comes with the air conditioner is just the right size to where it fits over these little knobs and it latches on and makes a pretty good seal. Now, the one thing I can't tell you is how cool the air is coming out of it because the thermometer now is covered up by this pipe. So I have no idea of knowing about that. I wish really they would have put the thermometer on the outside. That way you could see it no matter, you know, if this fitting is on here or not. It's still blowing out warm air for sure. And it says it has five lights on the battery. So I'm assuming it still has pretty good charge on it. And you can see the condensation is starting to come out down here. Luckily, there's a space below the battery, so it's not going to hurt anything. But you can see it coming out of the drain hole. So I probably should have put the drain hose on there and let it go over the table. I'll go get that. All right, y'all. I got a little tied up in the shop working on a project. It's been 54 minutes. Let's see what the temperature is. It was 81 degrees. It is 76 degrees. So it technically in in 54 minutes it pulled it down five degrees inside so technically that is cooler um, it's not as cool probably as i would have expected I'm, I'm hopeful that another you know 30 45 minutes it'll pull it down pretty good but let's give it some time and see so seeing the water coming out the bottom of the unit does let me know that it is pulling humid moist air out of the camper so i do know it's working um, i think the btus on this thing is I think it's a little under 2,500, maybe 2,300. I think the smallest air conditioner you can get for your house is like a 5,000. So this is a pretty small unit. So again, 54 minutes, it cooled it down basically six degrees, I think. Um, 
and that was cooling the air and cooling the walls and everything inside there. Now that that's done, let's give it a little while longer and see how long it goes. All right, let's see where we're at. It's one hour and 26 minutes, so it's about a half hour later than the last time. Last time it was, what, 75 degrees? Right now, it is 74 degrees. All right, so what do I think about it? In an hour and a half, it brought it from 81 degrees down to 74 degrees. Um, it's pulling heat out of the camper because I can feel the exhaust. It's uh, pulling humidity out because I can see the water dripping. So I know it's working. Is it making it cold inside? No, it's not making it cold. Um, it's making it comfortable. You know, I would not have wanted to sleep in there at 81 degrees. 74 would be fine with for me. Um, when I was in the, the tent earlier, it wasn't making me cold in the tent, but it kept me from being hot. It did make me, again, it made me comfortable, that directional air. So if this is a representative test, I would say if you're looking for something that's going to, uh, going to feel like a meat locker inside, this is probably not the one. If you're looking for something to make you comfortable, this is probably a good unit. Now I am running on battery power. I didn't plug it into AC power for two reasons. One is it should either work or it should not. I wanted to see one, you know, what it would do on battery power because that's how it's, you know, it's, it's intended to be ran. It's a portable AC unit. If the battery goes dead, I could plug it in but the intent is for me to run it on battery power. And the other thing is to see how long the battery lasts. And we'll go check that in just a minute. So right now I'm under the mindset that it's not gonna make me cold, but it'll make me comfortable. Looks like we have four blue lights. We started out with five. So that should be according to the manual, that should be 80% power. So I'm not gonna tell you that an hour and a half of running is gonna always equal 20% of battery life. <laughs> I think I don't think that would be an accurate summation because I don't know. It could be one of these deals where the more it runs, the faster it drops. I watched another YouTube review. Somebody said they only got two hours out of their unit. Um, I've been an hour and a half. It says it's down to 80%. So I'm certainly think I'm going to get longer than two hours. But this test was an hour and a half. If it takes me longer than an hour and a half to cool down my camper, it's probably not something I would want anyway. Um, would I take this on a camping trip? Yeah, I think based on this, uh, this you know, experiment I would, but I would not have my expectations of being cold inside the camper. I would just have my expectations of making it comfortable inside. And I think that's the big thing, is just making sure that you expect what, you know, what this unit is designed for. So I hope this helps you out. If you're thinking about buying one of these things, I'll be honest with you, there's not many tiny air conditioners on the market. There was a company called Climate Right that went, I don't want to say they went belly up, but as I understand, you can't get them anymore. So other than that, it's either buy something like this or convert a, a house unit over, which is kind of problematic. Um, so anyway, I hope this helped you out. If you enjoyed today's episode, give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you want to come back. And until next time, take care. We'll see you on the road.